Hey guys, it's Jessica from Peace Love Books, and today I'm here with a video that I do typically every year, and it's chatting about all the authors I've discovered in the year. So these are all authors that I really hadn't read before until 2022. A couple, I want to say, I might have read one, or I think maybe only one I've read one, and I didn't really fall in love with their books until this year and then like completely devoured them. It's really funny because a lot of these authors I talk about like non-stop on my channel and I'm just like who did I even read before? Because these authors like make up most of my reading these days so I will go ahead and chat about all the amazing authors. Like you might be surprised especially if you joined my channel this year that I have only read these authors this year. So we will go ahead and get started. The first author is one I read, it was like the fifth book I read this year and I have not looked back. I've only read two of her books this year though and I need to read her entire backlist and that is Jennifer Hartman. I got to meet Jennifer Hartman this year. I feel like a few of these authors I also did get to meet this year which was amazing as well because I did go to like four book signings this year. Five. I think it went to five book signings this year. Okay. I was very busy this year, but this is one of the most emotional romances I've read. Jennifer Hartman writes such devastating romances and such heartbreaking romances and definitely ones that have a bit of forbidden aspect, a little bit of angsty aspect. I love them so much. She is one of my absolute favorite writers now. This is one of my favorite books of all time. I really want to read Lotus next. Like that is on my TBR. For December, I'm gonna get it done, but I could not imagine my life without this author. Like I could not imagine my reading life without so many of these authors because I'm like, what are books without them? I don't know. The next author I have is Shanora Williams. I read, I think, four or five of her books this year, and I love her dark romances especially, and she has a really intriguing book coming out next year that I cannot wait to read. But Shanora Williams is an author that I discovered, I think, because I read Wanting Mr. Kane first. And that was because of McKay, and then I read Passion and Venom because of Cheyenne, and both are so good. So Wanting Mr. Kane is a dad's best friend romance, and it was just so dramatic and and just, I ate it up. I could not get enough of that romance. And then I read Passion and Venom, which is a very dark romance. She gets kidnapped by him. And he kind of like had said when he was young, he was going to marry her or was supposed to, but then she gets married to someone else that's his rival and he murders that man, but doesn't know that she was the wife that he kidnapped. It was dark and amazing. And I'm so excited to read Marshall Williams backlist. But Kay did send me one of her other books that's called My Fiance's Brother which is one of my favorite tropes, so I'm dying to read that as well. I'm so excited to read more from her. Then another one I read at the very beginning of January is Waking Olivia. Elizabeth O'Rourke is an easily a favorite author of mine now. I read this book and she's a runner. I myself run, so I love that aspect of this book and she falls for her coach. And then I also read Parallel, which I need to finish that series. I did also read Drowning Erin, so I think I read three Elizabeth O'Rourke books and two were absolute five out of five stars, so I definitely want to finish the Parallel series. I want to say before the end of the year, but that's probably not going to happen. But I also really want to get to her Devil series because that is more contemporary and I feel like not as angsty as this one is, but I heard so many people love the Devil series and I really need to get back to the Parallel series, which has time traveling and so good. I did interview a few of these authors on my channel as well because I was obsessed with them and I was like, I need to talk to you. So I did get to talk to Jennifer Hartman. I got to interview Elizabeth O'Rourke. I got to meet her also at Book Bonanza. So I have just had an amazing reading year and been able to interact with my favorite authors and just I'm so excited for the possibilities I have and all the good reading I have in store for me because I have so much of her backlist to catch up on and I'm excited. Then we have Odette Stone, which I can't believe I don't own an Odette Stone book, but I read book three in the Vancouver Wolf series in uh, February. I remember driving home from Nashville, and I went to the Nashville signing, and driving home from that, I was listening to this, and literally, I was so happy I picked a good one, because I was so into the story and did not mind driving six hours, and I finished this whole thing. So they are such good hockey romances, and they're all very different, which I really appreciate in series, that each book is a very different romance so you get something you want in every single one. I think book two I loved the most but I really love book one. Book three was good but I really liked book four too so all of them are amazing. They're about hockey players. A lot of them are kind of forbidden and they're just fun. Book three was definitely more unique because it was kind of like mafia and it had marriage of convenience in it as well which I enjoyed so check out Odette Stone if you haven't yet. My friends and I are all obsessed with her now and I need to read more from her. Then another one that's really fun is Mila Finelli. I've only read this 
she wet. I had so much fun reading this book and I am so excited to have found a new mafia romance favorite. I did just get book three for Christmas from Sam from Sam Reads a Little, which I'm very, very excited to read, but these are just a fun time. Like I was in such a dark mafia mood in the summer and wanted to read literally everything mafia. So I do have another author that I was reading this summer as well. So I know if I'm ever in the mood for a really good mafia romance to turn to Mila Finelli, she's a relatively new author. She does not have that big of a backlist, but I'm excited to have more authors to look out for new releases from because they're just going to write more good mafia goodness. The next one is actually next on the list and that is going to be JC Geisinger. I don't think I've read her before this year and I'm not really interested in her contemporary romances. Like they never really pulled me in or like made me want to read them but then a lot of my friends are reading this series and it was so good. I do own I think four where are they I know there's four in the series I've only read the first two but book two like blew me away and it was absolute five out of five stars I loved it it's a captive romance and Sloan is just amazing so I am like nervous to read more because I'm like how could she possibly top herself I don't know when I want to pick up books four and five but her mafia romances are amazing this one I actually really loved I know a lot of people don't love it love it because it's kind of insta love but I just have so much fun with these characters and her mafia romances so I'm definitely gonna finish the series at some point then another favorite that I've gotten to see at so many signings and I love it so much she actually has not gone to a signing as an actual signing author she just like shows up and hangs out and that is Nikki Castle. Nikki Castle so cool. I got to interview her on Tori's channel for Novel Life and she only has this series out and then a novella so she is also relatively new but she writes the best books. Book one is definitely my favorite. There are three books in the series now and I think I like them as the series goes on so I think book one is my favorite book two and then book three but they're all at least a four star read for me. They are MMA romances so they fight and Tristan is just superior to me. This one is an enemies to lovers. Book two is a sister's best friend. And then book three is like a, we just like really like each other and are super into each other and want to be like friends with benefits. So they're all really fun. I love the sports aspect in these as well. I need more fighting romances like MMA, boxing, UFC kind of things like I need more. Nikki Castle's amazing. I've seen her a few times now and she's signing in Denver I think so I'm really excited to see her there because I am going to Denver next year in March and it's gonna be fun. Another author I've gotten to see a couple of times now this year as well is Macaulay Smeltzer. I don't think I read anything by her last year but I read this one, two of the books in the boys series and then the first book in the Wildflower duet series which I need to finish that duet but this one I read because of McKay from Oh Hayes McKay. This is one of her favorite books of all time. So good for big in student guidance counselor. She lost her mom in a school shooting and is starting a new school and she's living with her brother and it is so good. It is long but it did not feel that long. I listened to it on audio and loved it and I just love Macaulay's books so much. They are more new adult from what I've read by her and the Wildflower duet is just like it is a messy messy romance because she is 18, falls for her neighbor who's a single dad so it's age gap and she has a boyfriend. So it kind of reads like a soap opera. I just love the mess and the drama and that delivered on all of it so I loved it so love Macaulay can't wait to read more from her then another one that easily so I became obsessed with small town romances okay guys I don't know what came over me I think we all kind of went through a small town romance phase because so many of my friends were reading them too I discovered Devney Perry so I've read one or two by Devney Perry in the past but I read like 15 of her books this year. I could not stop reading. I got a lot through my library and then her Eden series though is my absolute favorite. I read the entire Lark Cove series. I read the entire Jameson Valley series. The entire Clifton Forge series. So I think I read like 20 of her books this year and they're so good. I got to interview on her on my channel. I met her as well and I cannot get enough of her small town romances. Now I think that the Eden series is my favorite though because I've consistently given everyone four or higher. In her other series there were a couple duds for me but these are so emotional and this one is an angsty amazing second chance romance and I was obsessed it's my favorite in the series so if you haven't yet read Debbie Perry she has something for everyone her Clifton Forge series I would say is my second favorite series by her and then the Lark Cove and then the Jameson Valley Tori and I are doing a readathon in January for the Runaway Road series or like the Runaway series which I'm excited to read as well so hopefully I can read more of her backlist and get caught up because I'm close then another one that I feel like so many people read and I love her as a person too she's so cool that is Sarah Kate she wrote the salacious Players Club series this year and it absolutely blew her career up. So many people are picking up these books and I feel like it's definitely because of praise first because this is an ex-boyfriend's dad romance and it was perfection. Emerson 
I'm obsessed with him. This is my favorite book by her. I've only read two of these in the series, but I own all of them, and I got a couple more from her that I'm really excited to read. I think I've seen her like three times this year. She goes to so many signings. Maybe it's four. I don't even remember. I've seen her quite a few times, and I love seeing her so much. She has the best books, and then if you go see her at a signing, she will... Oh, what? She didn't do with this one. She has like a little stamp thing that she'll like, uh, like paid per stamp it and it's like a salacious players club stamp and it's really cool but i love her so much and i could not recommend these enough these all revolve around like a pleasure club but her other ones sound really good too okay i saved her for a little bit because i feel like you guys were you guys are waiting for her i know you are Catherine Cowles, I read one of her books either last year or the year before and it was fine but I never picked more of her books up and then this series came out and I read it and I literally did not look back. I have read almost her entire backlist and I just have her standalone left and I think a couple of novellas. Other than that I read her Rex series, I read her Sutter Lake series and then I read the Tattered and Torn series and I'm obsessed with her. You guys know I'm obsessed with her. People get annoyed by how much I talk about her because I love her books so much. They are so emotional and they all have amazing heroes like except for book one in this series the heroes are obsessed with the heroines want to spoil them just give them the world and like I'm here for it they have romantic suspense elements which I've realized I really really love in my romances as well so I devour her books my library had the audio of a lot and then my audible had a package of I think the first three in the rec series so I buy one credit three audiobooks which is really cool so I love her books physically and on audio the audiobooks are so good as well I think the entire Sutter Lake series I listen to on audio through my library so check your library if you have not yet for her books if you're interested but this series is definitely my favorite I think Hidden Waters is my absolute favorite but Catherine Cowles is just such a talented amazing writer and just such a lovely person in general too so I could not stop reading her books. Then we have Rachel Reed. I read two books in her series that's a hockey romance series. I'll put the covers here. Heated Rivalry, I think, is just her most well-known book, and for good reason, I loved it. So book one was great. I really do love sports romances, and I need to read more, and this series is a hockey romance, but Heated Rivalry is two hockey players, and I love when both of them are athletes, especially when they play together, and so they have been rivals their whole lives, and it's M.M they end up hooking up whenever they're in the same city but still like act like their rivals and hate each other and then things get really emotional and complicated and it's amazing I love this book so much I love the series so much I'm excited to read more from Rachel Reed I'm excited to read more from the series but I think for book one I gave four book two I gave five stars and I just need to read more then I have BK Borison I've only read two by her and they were recently but in the weeds Victoria from Victoria's Romance Reads, she just read this or she's currently reading it and went on Instagram to like fangirl over Beckett and I was like, you're telling me. I'm obsessed with him. Talk about a hero who worships his heroine. Like he wants it to work with her so badly and she's a social media influencer. It takes place on a farm. It's super cute. This one's not Christmas but the farm he works on is a Christmas tree farm and so book one takes place at the Christmas tree farm with the owner and then her best friend of like 10 years. It's so good. I love her romances so much and I'm excited to read her next one because I think I'll love it but I'm obsessed with her. You can look out for an author interview coming soon. So I'm so happy I read her books. Another author that like reminds me of BK Borison because of the covers and the fact that they don't have too big of a backlist and that's Tara DeWitt. She is the most recent author that I was able to interview on my channel. Tara DeWitt I got to talk to with Caitlin from The Love Librarian and Funny Feelings is amazing. Single dad, friends to lovers. It has to do with a comedian. Like Tara DeWitt's romances are so unique and I really love discovering authors who are writing stuff that's not already out there and that's what Tara said. She wanted to write a book that she couldn't find that she wanted to read and that's what she ended up writing with Rootbound and this one I really want to read Rootbound still but her books are just so good and I love the characters and just how vivid her characters are they're so unique there are so many scenes in here that I still remember that I'm obsessed with and he is a single dad and his daughter is adorable and I just love this book so much so if you haven't read Tara DeWitt yet read her she only has three books out so short backlist but I'm so excited to see what she has to come in 2023 okay the last one's an author that I think we also most of us discover this year that we are obsessed with and that is Elsie Silver. I love Flawless and Heartless 
so much. Like, they were without a doubt both five-star reads, and they are also kind of sports romances because the first one's a bull rider. The second one, he is a farmer, but he does have ambitions to, like, compete, and he kind of does compete in that one. So this one is a PR manager in the bull rider because she has to, like, babysit him. There's the only one bed trope. His family's hilarious. We get the same family in book two because it's his brother, and he is a single dad, and it's a nanny romance, and these books are amazing. I have the Gold Rush Ranch series on my shelves. I'm going to pick them up soon because I need more Elsie Silver. I need more cowboys. I need more small town. Everything I want. Elsie Silver delivers and again I'm excited for next year because she has some really exciting things coming out. And the last two are historical romance authors. So the first one is Teresa Medeiros. I read two books by her. Not this one but I cannot find the one I'm obsessed with and I don't know what I did with it but it's yours until dawn. I... I don't know where I put it, but Yours Until Dawn is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, and then I read Thief of Shadows or something, and that was really good too, and she writes such interesting and romantic romances. Like, I sometimes get him to get bored with historical romances, and there was not a second I was bored in her historical romances. The romance is sweeping, there's so much going on with the plot, the characters are so lovable, and I'm so excited to read more from her. I have so many. I don't know if this one is a... Cinderella retelling. She does have a few that are retellings and so this one might be it. I don't know but I'm so excited to read more from her and I need to collect all of her books. And the last one I have is Sapna Bog. She wrote two books that I read this year and I listened to them on audio through my library and they're so good. Both have heroines who have Indian heritage whether they are half British, half Indian, or I think the other one is completely Indian and from India. And I really love that aspect of them coming to England and having to enter society. So they are both so good. So the second one's actually cousins to the heroine in the first one, and she's running away from a really bad situation with her sister, and she falls in love with the best friend of the hero from book one, and they're just really, really good. I really love the characters in them. The romances are so sweet, especially, I think I liked book two better, because I'm vividly remembering things that happen near the end and you're just like oh my gosh what are they gonna do because some drama happens and they have to make some decisions and I just think that these are such refreshing historical romances that no one else is writing and I think more people need to read her. And those are all the authors I discovered in 2022. Let me know who you read in 2022 and who you're happy you discovered and if you read any of these authors that I talked about I would love to know. As always thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Bye.